Today we're going to be tying a foam beetle dry fly pattern. This is a part of our beginner fly tying series. If you haven't seen these before, please note that these are purposely done at a slower pace and the techniques are explained a little more thoroughly than you might be used to from other videos. The reason for this is the intent is to help someone who may have never tied before be able to tie their first fly pattern. So a foam beetle, while a simple pattern, is actually quite a lot of fun to fish for a variety of different species, including some of my favorites like brook trout and many different panfish species. For this, we have our dry fly hook that we've been using a lot for our, our beginner series, and that's a size 10. This is a nice size to learn on and happens to be a pretty good size to imitate a variety of dry flies that, that you may see. This particular hook is a gamagatsu dry fly, but you can use whatever dry fly hook that you have available to you or uh, is your preference. As always, I have removed the barb of this hook before I've started tying. This makes it a lot easier to not only debarb the hook, but remove the hook from both the fish and yourself should an accident occur. For our thread today, we're gonna to be using perhaps a different size thread than you may be used to for a dry fly pattern. This is a UTC 210 black. Now I've chosen black because we're gonna be tying a, a black colored beetle today, so you can change the thread color for your preference for whatever beetle you're trying to imitate. But I'm using a 210, which you also may know as a, a G sized or um, some people will call it a, a bass size thread or a streamer size. It's basically a thicker thread diameter. And the reason for this is because foam needs a little bit of tension to stay on a hook correctly. That tension can result oftentimes in our breaking uh, a more traditional dry fly thread like a 6 aught or a UTC-70. Moreover, foam is a little bit delicate. So if we were using a thinner thread, pulling on with the tension that we need in order to secure it could cut through that foam. And we want to avoid this. So this thicker thread works quite well for this application and works just fine on these smaller dry fly hooks. For our foam, I have some simple craft store two millimeter black foam. Now you can use whatever color foam you would like and you can use from whatever source, but this happens to be a relatively inexpensive sheet of foam that you can get from most of your local craft stores. The reason why we can get away with such a relatively small thickness is we're going to be folding this over a few times when we tie this pattern. In addition, we're going to be wrapping some peacock curl around our uh, hook shape. We're going to be leveraging some silly legs to imitate the legs of our beetle. Now I prefer these kind of silicone flutter legs because they're a little bit thinner and a little more flexible. And in this size pattern, for me, that works better. But you can use you know, different color legs like this brown pattern and you can use the sheet rubber legs if you have those available. This is a little bit stiffer so it's going to hold its shape more in the water. However, I find this to be a little bulky for this size of fly. And the last material that we're going to use is actually going to be some egg yarn. Now this egg yarn that I've chosen is pink. And the reason for this is this is going to be our indicator to allow us to better see this fly when we're fishing. There's pretty much very few things in nature that are this bright of pink, um, with the exception of maybe, you know, certain salmon eggs. But uh, that actually allows us to see this really easily especially if you fish this in the fall, like I often like to do. You may have leaves coming down that are orange and many different shades, but it's unlikely to find a leaf floating down the water with this bright of pink. So you'll see how we use that later on. Okay, so to get started, as always, we want to lay our thread base. So we're gonna go ahead and start bringing our, our thread back. And as we've done before, by holding our thread at an angle, it allows us to place one wrap next to another. So we come back maybe three quarters of the way and we go ahead and we cut our thread. After cutting our thread, we continue to wrap back 
to where that barb of the hook should be. Now again, we've crushed our barb, but that's about the same place as, as the end of this hook shank. This is going to allow us to begin to tie down our foam. However, unlike most times where we start to tie in in the back, we're actually going to tie about a, th a third to a quarter of the way from the eye. The reason why I've had the thread come back here is I'm going to do an open spiral forward. This I find to be kind of important and very useful. What we've done is we've added a bit of texture to this hook shank. When we tie our foam on, this is going to give the foam something to grip against. And that's going to help the foam from spinning when we finish our fly. But before we do that, we need to get our foam ready. And you can see here I've already cut off kind of a piece. I want to explain to you how I determine the length as well as the width of a piece of foam to cut. Typically, what we'll do is we'll measure our foam to be about the same as the hook gap for whatever hook we're using. And by pressing this foam against the hook point, what it does is create a small indentation. That gives me my width. Now my length is going to be about three hook shanks long. I don't actually need this long of a length, but this gives me some flexibility. So again, I'm going to kind of pinch and push against where that hook eye was, and that gives me my indentation. I'm also going to go back in and press against the hook point down at this spot. This gives me two lines to cut against to keep that body shape even. Now to cut this, I recommend using a larger pair of scissors. And there we have it. So to tie this on, we need a good tie-in point. So we need to cut our material to have a pointed end. So I'm just coming in each side and cutting into kind of an arrow-shaped point. This is going to allow me to start wrapping back without building too much bulk. But I'm going to show you another tip to prevent this fly from spinning around the hook shank at the end. I'm going to use some super glue. Now this is a gel type super glue. You may see a kind of a black red and it'll say ultra liquid control. This super glue can be very handy, but it's extremely, I would say, runny. It's, it's a, a very um, high flow type of super glue. This can be very problematic to work with, and it dries very quickly. This gel type, on the other hand, is actually quite nice when working with foam, because what it will do is stay on the hook shank, rather, in a thick bead, and it's not going to dry right away. It's going to give us some time to work with. So I could place this on and reposition if I need to. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of place my foam on, put my first wrap of thread around, and start working my way back. Now I'm being very careful to not apply too much pressure. If I were to come in and crank down, one, it's going to start wanting to twist everything. Two, I run the risk of cutting through this foam. So I'm going to do a series of open wraps to come back to that original tie-in point right about here. Now I'm going to come forward again with those open wraps this time applying a little more pressure. And finally, I'm going to come back a little bit closer to fully secure in this material. By tying this in in this way, this has provided a very strong anchor against this hook. This is going to really help this fly to keep its orientation on the hook and prevent it from spinning around. So the next part is we need to build up our underbody, and that's going to be our peacock. So our peacock curl, and what I've done in this bag is I've actually cut the end of the bag off. I wanted to show you this because peacock curl can be a rather difficult material to store and work with. But by cutting this end, it's very easy for me to slip it out, 
grab three relatively long pieces to work with. Set those off to the side. And then I can come back in and slide them through. That prevents this material from getting beat up and makes it very easily accessible and prevents it from kind of unraveling and getting all through my fly tying desk. Okay, so I've got my three pieces, three lengths of peacock curl. I wanna make sure that the kind of white end, the, uh, the thick end of the peacock curl are all oriented in the same place. And then I wanna come up to the tips that are actually rather fragile. And I'm just going to break those off. This is gonna allow me to be working with a thicker part of the peacock curl and it's gonna make it stronger and allow me to more easily tie this onto the hook. I'm also going to tie in at an angle. I'm not gonna tie straight back because I need to wrap this around the hook. If I tie straight back, I'm gonna to have to start at a 90 degree to the stem. And that may cause the peacock curl to break. So instead, I'm gonna come at an angle and tie my material in that way. This puts less stress on the peacock curl when I go to wrap it in. So I'm just gonna wrap forward, come up to about where the end of that foam is, and then I'm gonna take my peacock curl I'm going to wrap my hackle pliers around the back and I'm going to spin it. Now I'm not going to spin it a ton, just enough so I start to see a few wraps occurring. What this does is take the three strands of peacock curl and from a strength perspective make them closer to a single thicker strand. This is going to make it stronger and it's going to allow it to last longer. Now if you've done this quick enough, the super glue underneath will also be sticking to this peacock curl and help lock it in place as well. So as I come through, if I notice that I'm starting to run out of turns, I may just turn it once or twice more to again, keep that peacock curl kind of together in orientation. So I'm gonna wrap this up until I get to where my thread is. That's pretty good. And the nice part is with the hackle pliers, I can let that go. So now I'm ready to take my thread and wrap behind my material, in front of my material, behind and in front. And again, as always, that securely locks our material into place on the hook. So I can cut that off and then clean up by wrapping back. So that's good and locked in. So our next step is to bring our foam forward. Before we do, however, we want to wrap our thread all the way up to just behind the hook eye. And then we're going to take our super glue and we're going to put another thin bead right on top of the peacock curl. This is going to further secure both the foam and the hurl to the body of the hook. So now I'm going to grab it, the foam, bring it forward, hold with my fingers, and bring my thread around. Now notice I've applied almost no pressure to that first wrap. I'm going to start pulling a little bit and I'm going to grab the, the foam and start cinching down. And the third wrap and fourth wraps really lock it in place. That prevents our foam from wanting to spin and prevents us from accidentally cutting our foam. So now we're ready to bring our foam back. But to do this and to create a bit of a head on our beetle, we're going to bring our thread back here. So the way I did that is my thread's up at this tie-in point. I'm going to pull my bobbin back towards the bend of the hook and then catch the foam 
at maybe a quarter inch behind. And I'm gonna put about two wraps just to make sure that that thread's in position. The next thing I'm gonna do before I bring this back is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in my rubber legs. So I'm gonna grab a rubber leg. Now this is way too long. So I can get away with folding this in half, taking my scissors and cutting it. And now I have two rubber legs. Then, and I'm gonna show you this twice, if I take my thread and wrap my legs around it, then I can bring my thread down, and I'm gonna turn this vise so you can see this more clearly. And by just hanging onto the legs, allow it to go in position. And that's the easiest way to put legs on a fly, in my opinion. After I've done that, I'll put one more wrap around, helps lock it into place, and then I can readjust as needed. So let me show you what that looks like on the other side of the fly. So I have my leg. I'm going to bring my thread up and wrap my legs underneath. That allows me to place my legs into the position I want, right along the side of the body. Put a second wrap around, readjust as needed. Now those legs are locked into place. Our final step before we can fold the top of our, our head back is to grab a length of our egg yarn. Now egg yarn can be rather thick. And this we want to use, because it's a smaller fly, maybe a thinner section. So I've actually gone ahead and split this. You can find whatever thickness you prefer. I prefer this a little bit thinner, like this. And I've trimmed the end flush. So what I mean by that, so I've kind of spread this apart, come in, and cut a nice straight cut across. So now I'm going to place this indicator right up tight against the head and I'm going to put one more wrap around. Notice I'm not placing a ton of wraps down. I'm only putting as many wraps as necessary. I'll put one second wrap and now all of my legs and my indicator are locked into place. If we put too many wraps, we're gonna start building up a big bump here. And I don't think the fish will care, but the fly won't look as clean. So our next part is to try to trim some of this excess material. So I'm gonna come in, come and pull this indicator egg yarn right to the end of the back of the fly and give it a trim. Now I can get this out of my way and I can bring my foam back. So we'll just pull this back. This makes a nice head to the fly. And I'm gonna place one wrap loose, come up, start to pull a bit tight. Two wraps, pull a bit tight. I'm gonna fold this foam piece forward because obviously now we've blocked our indicator. And I'm going to trim it, as you can see, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch from where my thread was. That gives me a nice amount of indicator to be able to see. If you want, you can always come back in and trim this farther to give more uh, indicator uh, to be visible. And the last thing I like to do before finishing my thread is to trim my legs. So to trim these, we simply take the two rear legs, pull them back. Notice I'm not pulling them tight, just pulling them so they have tension, giving them a trim right behind the body. Then I'm gonna grab my two front legs, and again, without pulling them hard, just holding them lightly, and trimming them kind of just maybe an eye length in front of the eye of the hook. 
that gives me a nice short leg and a long leg. And at this point, if I want to readjust, I always can. So now I'm ready to finish off my thread. You can do this by whip finishing, which is what I prefer to do. When you can also take your super glue, if you'd like, and run your super glue a very thin amount along your thread. So I like to do this. I don't know if you can see this, but that is a very, very thin sheen of super glue. And I'll put maybe two wraps around. Honestly, I could cut this thread off and it's not going to come undone at this point, but I still like to whip finish to give a nice secure knot to which to secure this fly. So again, I've got a video showing how to use this tool if you're not familiar, but we're just going to do a three turn whip finish. Pull it tight and trim off our excess thread. And that completes our beetle. I hope you learned something and this inspires you to give it a give it a shot.